Welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and today we are going to make this really pretty rusty pitcher with pink flowers and I'm painting it on a wood panel. This is an 8x8 eight eight wood plywood panel that has a little hanger put on the back of it. I'm using Turner Acryl gouache. So all of the materials are going to be listed down below in the information box. So check down there and uh, you'll see the paints, the brushes. And I did not buy this panel because it's for a uh, sale at my public library and they gave them to us so that we could paint on them and donate them back to the library to be sold to help support community efforts. So let's get started. So I'm blocking this in. The picture is what I'm putting in first. It is a wonky rectangle or a trapezoid where the sides are tapered towards the top and then there's the band where the sort of pitcher pouring edge is, then the handle, and then where the flowers are going to go. It's not perfect. It is a placeholder for when I'm putting the paint in. You don't have to draw perfect finished rendered art to then start painting because you're covering it up anyway. You need the outlines and that's what I'm going to put in here, the outlines. Alrighty, so we're going to start painting in the background. I'm using Turner Acryl Gouache and a number eight round uh, Zen Art brush. It's actually a faux squirrel watercolor brush. I'm not real particular on how I treat my brushes. So if you're someone who has super expensive brushes, use your acrylic brushes, not your good watercolor brushes. I'm mixing up a sort of neutral gray blue type background with Prussian blue, burnt sienna, and white. And I'm going to paint that onto the background around my pitcher of flowers. I am going to sort of make it feel like it's sitting on a table and just using various tones of this gray. To put in the background again like i said it's a neutral ish gray blue so it is a little more cool it's okay it's it made me happy and it really makes the teal pitcher pop and the pink flowers pop so i'm just going to do that i'll meet you back here when the background is all painted in Thank you. 
If you're finding value in this video, click the subscribe button, share the video with your friends, and if you really, really want to help support this channel, you can click the super thanks down below the video. Let's start blocking in the rust. And because this picture is something that was over years, got this patina to it, the rust is something that's built up, the paint has chipped off, or, you know, maybe it's brand new. I don't know, but I'm going with the story in my head that it is old. It was found in the barn. It was cleaned up as well as it could be, and pretty flowers were put into it. I like that story. I'm using the same colors that I used in the background, burnt sienna and Prussian blue. And I'm going to block in various patches of the colors, making them darker, closer towards a dark chocolate brown with more of the Prussian blue into the burnt sienna. And then areas that are more like milk chocolate, which is a lighter version of the Prussian blue and burnt sienna and sometimes even with a tiny touch of white in it because it gives that milky oxidation type of effect so i'm going to paint this in and i'll meet you back here when we move on to some new colors Well, I decided that I need a little bit of real black in this just to extra deepen up the tone. So I added just a touch of black. I'm not putting straight black anywhere on this. It's always mixed with other colors because it's creating tones of those colors. It's deepening them, but it's not straight black. At this point, I'm taking some of that black, mixing it more into my brown and blue, and really getting the dark shadow color that is in the background of the rust patches and underneath of the edges where the flowers are going to be. So looking at where the light and dark really stand strong, that's where I wanna put these extra patches of really dark. Then I start working over the top of them a little bit and blending it in, finding out where the edges of my rust and paint are going to come together. But this is an evolving process. You don't get it on the first pass. This is a project of many layers. And again, using the acrylic gouache, I get to do all of these layers. They don't reactivate and start coming back up, but it's very matte. And that's something that I like about acrylic gouache is that I have all of the benefit of acrylic paint, but then I have the texture and the almost luminosity of that not shiny reflective paint of gouache. And that's something that I really enjoy. time to start the flowers and I am using the magenta from the Turner acrylic gouache set and white and I'm going to mix the magenta and white and get a very very soft pink color I'm going to start blocking in those flowers 
and sort of putting them in with just using the brush for the shapes. I am layering these petals in some of the flowers you that I put in to begin with, you're never going to see at the end. And that's okay because it's all layers. And if you look at a bouquet of flowers, there's so many where you see one petal of a flower. So let's just roll with it. Put these flowers in. I'm doing layers of colors, sometimes stronger pink, sometimes lighter pink, and it all will work out in the end. Next up is getting the colors for that sort of teal turquoise on the pitcher. And I'm doing that with the sky blue and the permanent lemon. And those two colors mixed together and then just a touch of white gives you that sort of turquoise. Now, sometimes I'm a bit more blue, sometimes I'm a bit more green. It all works to make it look that old peeled enameled paint. So I keep working back and forth until I get it to the color that my eye wants it to be. And this is going to be another set of putting in the layers. You've got some deeper bluish cast to the shadows. You've got some more greenish cast to the blue green turquoise color in the highlight areas. So I work my way back and forth and I layer the paint up again. Just like an onion, lots and lots of layers.
as you can see, my blue color went over a lot of the rust. So now I'm going to start working that rust back in. I'm letting it mix. I haven't used the dryer on this painting yet. Uh, you can use a blow dryer, a heat tool, uh, just letting time dry the paint. It's up to you. But since I wanted to get this done in a reasonable amount of time, and I'm kind of one of those, when I start a painting, I want to finish the painting. I'm not somebody who can work on a painting for days and days or weeks and weeks. I like to get in, do it, and be done. So I got this done in less than an hour. I just kept going back and forth, adding the rust back in, adding some of the blue back in, using the dirty brush. I don't tend to wash my brush out as much as I used to. I think that's a trick that you learn as you get more comfortable. You learn when it's time to wash the muck out of the brush and when it's time to use that slightly dirty brush and pick up your paint. I'm not washing my brush super well, so there might still be a little bit of some of the dirt, dirty brush, background colors still in the mix. I'm going to go ahead and put more Prussian Blue out, mixing it with the Burnt Sienna to continue deepening up that rust again. And I'm letting it build. My rust spots are going to end up being my rust spots, not the ones that are in the original painting, but it's still going to have that feeling. I am working around the bottom edge where the metal is rolled because there's a little bit more shadow and you need to get it crisp. That edge needs to be crisp. If it isn't, it doesn't feel like there's a real bottom to the picture. So let's keep going. And this is where I'm really mean to my brushes. So don't do this to your good brushes, please. This is a Zenart uh, faux squirrel brush. It's a little soft for putting texture in, but I like that I can get a really fine point with it and I can mush it out a little bit if I need to, to start getting some of that speckling of the rust coming through all of those layers. So as you've been noticing through this video, I have been speeding up sections. The sections that I've sped up have only been sped up two times, so twice the speed. So you can always slow it down if you want to. This right here, this is real time mixing my colors and then applying them. I am working on getting those highlights in there now. The highlights are not plain white, they are 
mixtures of colors, but they're getting lighter. I'm working my way towards that final color range. <laughs> it's it, and it's a color range. It is not a perfect, uh, perfect clean white. There, very, very rarely is pure white or pure black in any painting. They're all colors that reflect the colors around them or absorb the color around them. So don't worry about keeping your brush perfectly clean. But if you're going to do something like pure pink, you're going to want to wash your brush out and want to wash your or clean your water. You know, keeping clean water on hand to make sure that the colors that you want to stay pretty and bright, stay pretty and bright. But right now I'm still working with the browns, the blues, and a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow in it. That's it. Let's get these flowers finished up. I am going to be layering in more flowers and I am using the shape of the brush to do that. I have done this entire painting with one brush, all of the details, all of the big strokes, the whole background, everything was done with this number eight round brush. Uh, you can use any brush you want. Have fun with it. Figure out which way to hold the brush to make the petals. I always get confused and make some flowers wrong first and then go back in and start making them right. It's okay. Uh, pulling them from the edge of the, of the petal in towards the center seems to make the biggest difference. I am going to be working contrast. So I'm doing light and I'm doing dark. I want to pump up the contrast. If you see that reference up there, the centers of those flowers are really deep magenta-y, almost orangey yellow. And so I will push some of those colors in here. I don't want it all to be one pastel puff. I want it to be a series of flowers. So I'm going to keep layering and going back and forth. There will be a point here where I add a little bit more yellow to some of this and then I work my way back out of it. It's okay. And that's part of learning how these flowers work and how a painting works is put stuff in, take stuff out, do it again. I'm going to try doing a little bit more orangey flowers in here, trying to deepen up those centers a little bit. You know, it, it works in the end and that's all that really matters.
Sector and Sector goes out. almost to the end and I need a way to sort of ground this to the table a little bit so I'm dropping a few petals if you look at the reference there's some flowers that are actually on the table and there is a little bit more of a shadow I didn't put as much shadow on the table so I needed something to sort of pull it down and hold it there this just made me happy it was less than an hour start to finish I am so excited about how this rust turned out. It is so, so special. Now I might go in and darken, put a little bit more contrast into the flowers. I might not, I'm not sure. I need to let it rest for a little while and decide. I love it how it is. So I may not change anything. I think that this will be a really pretty little painting going into the sale to help support the friends of the Fort Vancouver Regional Public Library. I think this is pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friends. And remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself, whoa, so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon. <laughs> Bye guys!